This is what freedom sounds like. And this, this is what freedom smells like. Ah. Enjoy 30 days of open road freshness. Febreze Car. Ever notice how stiff clothes can feel rough on your skin? For softer clothes that are gentle on your skin, try Downy Free and Gentle. Downy will soften your clothes without dyes or perfumes. The towel washed with Downy is softer and gentler on your skin. Try Downy Free and Gentle. I can remember specifically doing Living Single, and the word came down that we needed to lose weight. Really? Our new interview with Queen Latifah is pulling no punches when it comes to weight and the stigma around the word obesity. Join us tomorrow for that. And you know, I had mm. to talk to the Queen about the 25th anniversary of one of my all-time favorite movies, Set It Off. Uh, thank you all for not setting it off oh, here no, no, today. No. Set it on off. This day. Happening now. A fight at an Arlington High School escalates to a shooting in a classroom. Coming up, the number of people injured and who police have in custody. Plus, County Judge Nelson Wolf announces his plans for the county and his plans for the future in today's State of the County Address. We have a space station flyover visible this evening. I'll tell you about that and let you know when the humidity returns in a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. Time had passed by and I don't know. I, I just thought we were next. I thought my class was next. She thought her class was next. First at five, one student shot, three others injured at an Arlington High School. The suspect is in custody. The Arlington Police Department identifying that shooter as 18-year-old Timothy George Simpkins. He was arrested after an hours-long search that started after the shooting was reported. Myra Arthur joins us live from the newsroom with what investigators are learning about Simpkins, the shooting, and the victim, Smyra. As Stephen Ursula, this happening at Timberview High School in Arlington. Let's start with what police there called the good news this afternoon. The one student who was shot is out of surgery now in intensive care. One man who was also wounded is in good condition, and a female that was grazed by a bullet is expected to be released from the hospital today. A fourth person also hurt but did not have to go to a hospital. Investigators believe that 18-year-old Timothy Simpkins pulled out a gun and started shooting inside a classroom this morning following a fight with another student. Police said they've seen video of that fight, but not the shooting, at least not so far. The Arlington PD assistant chief said that Simpkins turned himself in with an attorney present this afternoon. That's after law enforcement spent hours looking for him. And in that time, they say that other illegitimate threats and inaccurate information was being posted to social media related to the shooting, which diverted law enforcement resources. We've been having a lot of social media comments about threats to our schools from young kids. I want the message to be out there that this is not something to uh, continue. We will investigate you and we will bring you to a uh, successful prosecution. So I'm, I'm just pleading with the community out there to, uh, to try to stop any type of uh, threats that are coming through social media. Another officer at that briefing this afternoon urging parents to pay attention to what your kids are doing online. Meantime, investigators say a 45 caliber handgun was recovered about two miles from the school. It's now being sent in for ballistics testing. The all clear at that high school, which has 1,700 students, was given this afternoon. Simpkins will be charged with three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, we do have a KSAT crew en route to Arlington, and they'll have a live report from Timberview High School coming up at 6. Stephen Ursula. Thank you so much, Myra. Very disturbing. Meantime, here at home, some big news for Bear County. Judge Nelson Wolf announcing today that after 20 years as the Bear County judge, he will not seek another term in office. The announcement coming during today's State of the County address. Tiffany Huerta spoke with the judge about his departure and what he's most excited for in his last year in office. I have one year, three months to go. But I will not run for re-election. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf was appointed to the position in 2001 and successfully won re-election five times. I want to thank our citizens for allowing me to serve my state, my city, 
and Mark Kelly. We thank him for his service. Judge Wolf is proud of many projects he was involved in, and he plans to finish many more before his term ends. I want to get the next section of San Pedro Creek completed by the end of next year. Uh, we want to get up the Bibliotech Library up next year. During today's State of the County address, Wolf also spoke about $244.2 million being spent on trails and creek projects. But another project Wolf is excited about is the Navistar plan. And they will start production in the first quarter of this coming year, and they will have 600 people working out there by the end of the quarter to produce trucks for Navistar including their first all-electric trucks. As for what comes next for Bear County and whoever fills his position. The biggest advice I would have uh, is that try to keep in, in, in place a good uh, organization and a good management structure, whoever they may choose. Tiffany Huertas, Case at 12 News. And during today's address, Judge Wolf also spoke about COVID-19 and the road to recovery. Bear County has endured three surges of COVID-19 so far. The judge thanked local health and medical officials and encourages everyone to get vaccinated to prevent another winter surge. We plan to speak with the Bear County judge live during our case at Q&A. It's tonight during the six o'clock news at about 630. New at five, we have an update on a deadly motorcycle crash that happened in Kerr County. It killed four members of the Thin Blue Line Motorcycle Club. 29 year old Ivan Robles Navejas, the man accused of driving drunk in the 2020 crash, pleading guilty now to all the torches. That includes four counts of intoxication manslaughter and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Robles Navijas is accused of crossing the center line of Highway 16, then hitting all four motorcyclists head on. He could face up to 80 years in prison. His sentencing is scheduled for January. A 21 year old murder suspect turning himself in after a three week manhunt. Luis Angel Alvarado charged in the murder of 31 year old Santos Cedillo. Cedillo died on September 20th at the Granada Apartments in the 1400 block of Somerset Road. Investigators say Alvarado and Cedillo got into a fight and at some point Alvarado fired multiple shots, killing Cedillo. His bond has been set at $250,000. More than 200,000 at home rapid COVID tests being recalled tonight. The reason they're giving people false positives. The at home tests are made by the company Illum. It's unclear how many false positive results there have been and tests were sold at August Walmart, CVS, Target and on Amazon. Illum was the first company to receive FDA authorization for the COVID-19 home test kits. The company plans to email affected customers or notify them through its app. It's the first time we're hearing this in 2021. The CDC now predicting the number of COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and deaths will continue to decline over the next two weeks. That prediction coming as people are getting their flu shots uh, at their booster shots versus those just getting their first time vaccines. And there's another treatment option that's going under review right now. AstraZeneca seeking emergency use authorization for its antibody treatment. This is not in place of the vaccines. Really important. This is an additional layer of therapy that we have. If emergency use authorization is granted by the FDA, AstraZeneca's treatment would be the first long acting antibody combination getting approval. Northside ISD relaxing mask requirements starting October 11th. That's Monday. The district will no longer enforce a mask mandate. In an email to parents, the district says it still strongly encourages mask use, though. NISD says the decision is the result of local numbers declining and metrics improving. For a number of weeks now, the district says it'll continue to monitor cases and is prepared to reinstate the mask mandate district wide or at specific campuses if confirmed COVID cases rise significantly. So far today, a carbon copy of yesterday, 61 in the morning, then a high temperature of 91 degrees. Very pleasant out there, of course, with low humidity and nothing but sunshine right now. Temperature wise, 
upper 80s to right near 90 degrees. Panama Maria 92, Lakey right now at 90. Meanwhile, we're looking at some mid and upper 80s just north of San Antonio. We're talking 86 Canyon Lake right now. New Braunfels at 89 and Windcrest 87. So pretty quiet this evening. A clear sky, calm wind, low humidity. Temperatures falling off, but it's going to be pleasant. I mean, by 10 o'clock, mid 70s, midnight, right near 70. You know I love space station flyovers. We've got one later this evening. I'll have those details and talk about our next rain chances in a bit. Thank you so much, Adam. Growth in New Braunfels, it's brought an unfortunate side effect, traffic congestion. Yeah, our Samuel King joins us now. Sam, the city has a number of projects underway to try to deal with all that traffic. As Steve and Ursula officials have been focused on improvements to roadways like I-35, say Highway 46, State Loop 337, as well as local streets. The efforts include adding turn lanes and adjusting signal timings at several intersections to let traffic flow better. Also, four corridors are either under construction or under design right now. There's also been a focus on closing sidewalk gaps in the city. Coming up at six, more on those efforts to relieve congestion and how they're being funded. Our big traffic issue this evening is in Loop 410 in San Antonio. We usually we talk about 35, but this is a crash just starting here or just uh, at the top of the hour. This is a uh, Loop 410 westbound at Jackson Keller. You see at least one lane there. You see law enforcement still active on the scene. That's causing a big slowdown on the highway there. 21 minutes now from 281 to I-10. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Sam. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and to begin the month, we hosted a KSAC Community Town Hall on Domestic Violence Awareness. One of the panelists works for the Family Violence Prevention Services. She says no matter your background, domestic violence is a choice. When you recognize abuse as a choice, number one, you hold the person who makes that choice accountable, and number two, it releases that person who's the recipient of violence from the guilt and from the shame. The conversation over domestic violence and the resources available in our area continues in the town hall. It is available for you to watch right now on KSAT.com. Facebook still in the hot seat after a whistleblower testified about her concerns regarding the social media site and its impact on children. Today, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg speaking up on behalf of the company, saying former Facebook product manager Francis Hoggins claims, quote, don't make any sense, end quote. In her testimony, Hagen said one issue she noticed is the number of 14 year olds who say they feel bad when they use Instagram, but they can't stop. Hagen is now calling on senators to pass laws to create more transparency and oversight. Big tech companies have way too much power, way too much influence in our society today, and there are a lot of harmful side effects that are resulting from the use of these secret algorithms that manipulate the content that people see. Facebook actually agreeing today, saying, quote, it's time to begin to create standard rules for the Internet, end quote. The U.S. Senate postponing a vote on a House pass bill to suspend the debt cap. This after Senator Mitch McConnell offered Democrats an emergency short term extension. Senate Democrats considering changing the filibuster rules to allow them to move forward with debt ceiling legislation without Republican approval. The deadline to increase the debt ceiling now less than two weeks away. Being at home more often over the last year and a half has many people sprucing up their spaces. It can be as simple as a fresh coat of paint, but what do you do with all the excess paint? Up next, how to properly store it for later use. ASAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Dia de los Muertos is a reunion and celebration with your lost loved one, so the key to a good ofrenda are the offerings placed on the second level. It's a party, so make sure to include their favorite foods like pizza or chocolate and put out a beer or some tequila to make a toast. Your loved one may want to dress up for their visit, so put out their favorite hat, outfit, or maybe some lipstick. These offerings make a spirit feel at home and they will bring back all those beautiful memories you shared together.
Home renovations, room makeovers, and DIY projects, they typically mean you end up with leftover paint. Chances are you may have a collection of leftover paint. Well, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore it shows us how to store paint correctly so it stays fresh enough to use it next time. Marissa Scheinfeld has a paint stockpile, so many leftovers and sample cans. It's as a result of numerous years of living in two different houses and really wanting to get the right paint color. She's hanging on to her colorful investment for touch-ups. After all, leftover latex can last for years. Here in our lab, we have paints that are over 10 years old, and because we store them properly, we can still use them whenever we need them. You want to keep water from evaporating from the paint and keep microorganisms from getting into the can. Consumer Reports' Rico DePaz says creating an airtight seal is key. First, with a wet cloth and screwdriver, wipe the paint out of the rim channels and gently hammer down the lid. If you only have a little paint left, he says it's better to transfer the paint to a clean jar with a screw on lid. That means less air exposure. Of course, labeling is a good idea. Store paints out of direct sunlight, 50 to 80 degrees. Temperature extremes can ruin the paint. When it's time to use it, test it to be sure it goes on easily and has uniform color. Not sure about an old can? If the paint can is bulging or the lid is puffed up or the paint has a rubbery film on top, it's probably time to go. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Yeah, that 80 degree limit. Uh, yeah, not good. Don't leave it in your garage. Yeah, Adam and I just that's discovered. Yep, it's elevated in my garage as well. That doesn't help. But we don't have basements, you know, for the most part around here. So where do you Steve, store Steve, you have no excuse. I, I do have a basement, but I have some paint in the basement, but most of my used paint collection yeah. is in the garage. You put it out where you don't care, right? Well, yeah. now we know where to put our paint. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. All right, come on hey, over. Hey, you see that clear sky out there, right? You know how I love a good space station flyover, and we have one visible this evening. Take a look at the info. Set your alarm starting at... 826 p.m. It's only going to last four minutes, appearing in the northwestern sky and disappearing off to the east. 826. Look off to the northeast. That's where it's going to appear. And take a look at our visible satellite. It looks pretty good for viewing the ISS this evening. Really not much in terms of clouds anywhere around us. You have to get outside of Texas to get into the cloud cover. I mean, we have a few high clouds and mid clouds out there but those won't inhibit your viewing of the space station. Again, 8.26 p.m. It's going to be a quick one, only lasting four minutes. Here's the big picture of our weather pattern. Clear across Texas, we talked about that. Most of the activity right now is right along and east of the Mississippi. That's where we have a wound up low pressure system. Big upper level low, still churning the same one that we've been talking about since Monday. And actually some severe weather associated with this now in parts of uh, Tennessee and southward into Alabama. A lot of rainfall associated with that. Good lift with that. That's going to stay out of our area, actually moving away from us and replacing it upper level high. So a blue H settling in as we get into this weekend. That'll bump our temperatures up a few more degrees, but then we're watching this next dip in the upper level flow, which should move into the Intermountain West on Saturday. That's going to pass just north of us by the end of the weekend and early next week, and we'll get clipped by a weak little wind shift and little boundary. We could have a few stray showers on Monday morning. That's our next chance. You can tell by the way I'm talking about it. I don't have much confidence that we'll see much, if anything, out of that. So Monday morning, a 20% chance. And then another shift in our weather pattern that's slightly more promising, giving us a 30% chance by Wednesday. Outside now, there's that clear sky. Again, good for the space station. It looks like a really bright star, steadily but swiftly moving through the sky. 89 degrees right now, dew point of 54. Calm wind, another pleasant evening. Dew points in the 50s, so a lack of mugginess out there. That's the key. And even closer to the Gulf Coastline, the humidity hasn't really surged back into place from the Gulf of Mexico. We've been talking about this all week. The dew points stay low through Saturday. But then by Sunday, the mugginess is back and it's here to stay into next week. And that's going to mean some warmer mornings and, of course, that sticky feel to the air outside. Right now, Del Rio 95, Hondo 91, Pleasant to 92. Then we have some upper 80s elsewhere, and mid 80s in the hill country. Tomorrow morning, low 60s for most of us. Hondo 62, Canyon Lake, Gonzales 62 in the morning, but some upper 50s in the hill country. Locally, I think we'll be near and into the lower 60s for morning temperatures. Another pleasant start to the day tomorrow, especially with the lack of humidity. By the afternoon, 
back up to the 90 degree mark. We're talking 92 Elmendorf and Von Army. 92 Casterville, 88 though, Bernie and 90 even in Timberwood Park. Light southerly breeze tomorrow, but nothing but sunshine. We'll have some high clouds moving in on Friday. And the reason I point that out is I think that should make for a beautiful sunset Friday evening, especially at high school football games. Otherwise, the warmest temperature in the foreseeable future Sunday at about 94. You heard that, Greg? I'm ready. You ready yeah. to take pictures uh, at high school football? Yes, I am. Okay. You, you With know, no rain or lightning, I'm always ready. <laughs> you know, Greg, I think the most surprising thing to me about the Cowboys announcement last night yeah. is they invested a lot of time and money. Yeah, in well, you, we talked about it last night. $35 million guaranteed yeah. in a $64 million contract, and they still owe him another $7 million. So was it a difficult decision? The Cowboys tell us, yes, releasing that man right there, Jalen Smith. Where can he wind up? We'll let you know. And the Spurs are in Detroit for another preseason game coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. We are getting reaction today from the Cowboys bombshell they dropped in Dallas last night. That's when they cut linebacker Jalen Smith, even though they still owe him $7.2 million. By making the move now, the Cowboys will save $9 million in next year's salary cap, and at the same time, give Smith plenty of time to sign with another team, more than likely Green Bay. Since the Cowboys have drafted Micah Parsons and Jabril Cox, both Smith and Leighton Vander Esch have become expendable. The Cowboys are signing not to pick up Leighton's fifth year. Still doesn't make the move any easier. We just felt that this is the was the the best time to make to make this decision. Uh, obviously, there's not there's not really ever a good time for these type of decisions, but basically, just with all the all the factors involved, is is why the decision was made yesterday. This is a big roster, big picture roster move. Um, so, you know, as far as far as us moving forward, we just felt that this was the right time. And Smith is one of the great NFL comeback stories after injuring his knee in his final game in Notre Dame. Only had the Cowboys take a chance on him with a second round pick in 2016 to work his way back to being a Pro Bowl linebacker in 2019. The Houston Texans are coming out their worst loss in franchise history, a 40 to nothing shutout in Buffalo. And like the Cowboys, just delivered a surprise. They've decided to cut veteran wide receiver Anthony Miller, even though they gave up two draft picks to next season to get him. And he's the only wide receiver on the team to catch a touchdown pass from rookie quarterback Davis Mills. Now, after dropping their third game in a row, running back David Johnson was asked about the mood in the locker room. Mood is still high, you know, uh, especially with, you know, we're still early in the season um, and our conference isn't doing well uh, as a whole. So we still got a chance. You know, you, the biggest thing is just winning your conference and then going from there. All right. The Patriots are not in their division and they are up next at noon on Sunday. After delivering a big 111-85 victory against the Utah Jazz on opening night for their 2021 preseason, the Spurs are on the road for the first time in Detroit tonight. For Jakob Pertl, this will be his first season of his NBA career, including Toronto. It will start without DeMar DeRozan by his side now that he plays for Chicago. It's been weird not having a, a bunch of vets around. Um, obviously, we got a couple of older guys on the team, but they're all new to the team. So, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting experience. Um, I think a couple of us younger guys are trying to slide into that role, like trying to take on more responsibilities in that way. All right, tip off tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll have all the highlights for you tonight on the night beat at 10. Little Caesars Arena. There you go. <laughs> pizza, pizza. You yeah. got it. Thanks, Greg. I'll be right back. Still watching uh, the situation on Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. A crash there has closed a couple of lanes, and it's really... Uh, backing up traffic in the area. This is the view on Transguide from Loop 410 at Northwest Military. So watch out for that if you're heading out and about on the north and northwest side this evening. Thanks, Sam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.